So welcome everybody. We're so glad you're here. So today, uh, this presentation is a stair builders and manufacturers and presentation, but we have some fantastic SMA members that are here to give this presentation to you. So we have Sitsa, who is with Alekasoft StairCon, and they develop and support StairCon. They are specialized stair software for design and production. We also have Nate Clay and also Bob King from King and Company, and they are a millwork company specializing in high quality custom stairs. They are here to just give a little bit of their perspective. We also have Dennis Chamberlain from Stair South here. He's going to also share his, his perspective. And then House of Forgings, we're going to show some of their products that are included in StairCon software and how those can be used. And Chris and Esteban were um, helpful to Sitsa in providing this presentation. So. so who are all on here? Just us? So then, um, Sitsa, if you want to go ahead to the next slide. Uh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Thanks. So here is the agenda for today. So Sitz is going to be your presenter. We're going to talk about StairCon. He's going to talk about that database that we talked about with House of Forgings and their parts. And then we're going to go over that user experience using King and Company and Stair South. And then he'll follow that up with some points of attention for you. So we're so glad you're all here. Sitza, go ahead and take it away. Okay, awesome, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna take the introduction uh, mm -hmm. to take it short. Um, well, you guys can see me right at my picture mm -hmm. here. Uh, so I just gonna show you some of the things how we do the release notes and we have now a new version um, that we are having in the make. Uh, so the first release we released actually the end of last week, that was the 2020.2 that we introduced a new 3D solid modeler within Stericon. So we mainly do that for our future development that we are having an even stronger uh, software to, to, to develop on. Um, but the first thing that our current customers will see when they uh, use or activate that uh, new solid modeler in the background that they see it as a new 3D viewer. So everything will be with physical based rendering. Mm -hmm. So just an example of a release note, if I click on here. So we say how to start with it and there are some tips and tricks. If you click on this, then they can download new uh, uh, PDF uh, files or new texture files. Uh, so if I, I don't know mm -hmm. if I, didn't prepare that, but if I click on it, then you will see that we get to a folder that you can download these uh, new rendering files as well. So going back to my PDF. So here we explain a little bit about the new rendering that uh, it, it yeah, you can put shyness and roughness to a material. And then basically it's like how you see it here inside Stericon that you see iron or metal or stainless steel exactly how how it would be in in uh, reality but the main reason why we actually introduced that new solid model is actually that um, we can do better uh, a better job even in the future with having that solid modeler as a driving force uh, behind stericon so you see here with physical based rendering that it's quite a difference uh, if you do it without um, not a lot of things that I, I want to go too deep in today because we also have a presentation from Dennis and from Nate and Bob. So going back to my, uh, bear with me, let's see here. So I also have introduced a movie. I'm just gonna go through it. So all these things, and in case that anybody would like to know a little bit more about Stercon, I can always uh, plan a one-to-one -one meeting and and or share some movies if you want and and uh, and maybe do a demo based on specific things that that you would like to see. So I'm not going to go too deep in that now. I would like to take the opportunity that if you have questions at the end, that you still can ask it to to Dennis or to Bob or to uh, Nate. But just to know that we have quite some material also that we could share uh, in case that you want that. Um, 
just to give an introduction, if I go here to Stercon, mm -hmm. what the idea is of Stercon is that everything is parametric, although that we are like a CAD program. So there are many things that, that that's, are similar as how you would do it in another CAD system. We have coordinates and stuff like that. But if I start with a new project, you can put in customer name, address, we can print afterwards uh, on, a, on a sheet uh, the, the information that you have filled out. Uh, I have it now on the Ontario norm because I'm in Canada, but we can also put it to USA. These norm files are open. So everything actually within Stericon is open. When you have an open database, you can change your balusters, newels. You can make all these things yourself, but like we're gonna show later on, we, we try to avoid that you have to reinvent the wheel. So House of Origin, mm -hmm. Uh, is a very popular brand of balusters. So we, we try also to, to uh, um, make them available uh, that not everyone has to redesign it. And Estefan did a great job in making the 3D files uh, for us. So we are really grateful for that. So if I go on, when we start a project, we can put in floor to floor heights and then the stair will actually adjust to that. So just to give a very basic introduction. If I start with a, a wizard, you will see later on, uh, we have more ways of creating stairs and stuff like that. And uh, everyone does it in their own way. Uh, so Bob and, and Dennis will, will talk about it later on. But let's say that I use this wizard, I place this, it has a dimension, my walls are in there. And I can say I create, let's say a section stair. This is something we introduced uh, basically last year um, where you can say how many threads that you uh, would like. So if I say, I want to have five threads here, then I want to have a landing. It can go left or right. So in this case, I go right. I want to have another six threads and my landing again. And you can set up these landings, winder boxes with your dimensions, with your angles. Um, so it's basically very important when you start with Stericon that we look at the uh, database and that it's set up according to your uh, methods. So if I say now apply, then you see it's applying a specific model from my database. So if I look here to models or collections. This is actually an overview of the models that we have in our standard database. So if you, if a customer now starts with Stericon, these, these, these are actually the ones that we provided. So if you click from one model to another, you see that it's changing the balusters, newels and, and so forth. So if I go back to this one, you see in 3D, how this one looks, it gets already uh, specific newels, specific balusters, etc. But that's actually what you set up in the uh, database. So here we see our walls, here we see our newels. If I go to the next uh, floor and I say create a balustrade, then it's creating automatically a balustrade where there's no walls and no stair end. So in this case, that would be on this side. And again, if I maybe create here a stair, um, oh, cancel I, this one I want. So let's create a stair here. And I, I take a, a curved stair, I place it. So I take now the same model, but I, now I take a wizard for a curved staircase. So you see that you get the floor to floor height again. It's the same model, but I can still play around that my walk line is somewhere else that I maybe have more or less risers. If I maybe increase the rise, then you see it's gonna be getting bigger. So, and you can see over floors, right? I see now this stair, but I see also the, the stair that is below and I can view height whatever I see above or below. Um, I can move things, I can edit things, I can select everything. So if I pick this point and I say move, let's say my handrail and I just move it there. Not everything I do makes sense, right? I'm not a professional stair builder, but I, I, I can help you with uh, Stericon as a tool to to design it, but I'm not the best designer. But here you see just a glimpse of having these wizards, having these uh, models uh, does help you to, to get uh, fast to a specific uh, result. And we can also test um, 
on the building code between the stairs, right? If you see here, Staircom will recognize from this stair towards this stair in case if we would have a headroom issue. We can also put in uh, walls in an angle, like a, like a ceiling. Uh, Dennis will talk a little bit about that as well. Um, so just to give a, a, a first impression about what, what we can do with, uh, with Staircom. So back to my PowerPoint. So the next thing I want to talk about, and maybe afterwards you can, if, if you have some questions about it, uh, Chris and Estefan can um, give some more explanation, but what uh, House of Forging did, they helped us to uh, increase this uh, database. So um, it's, it's a big benefit for us as well, obviously, that we can share this with our customers. And as some of them we made in the past, like for instance, here you see some balusters that uh, I made um, a while back because some customers were asking for it. And actually the majority of the questions that we got from customers that wanted to make new metal balusters were always house of origin. So we are very fortunate that, uh, that we have a cooperation now with, with them and that they, basically helped us. This is one that uh, Estefan did. Um, we are still in the process to optimize their database to look at the patterns, the, the, the typical patterns that we would like to put in the standard database. Uh, and, and what we actually would like to, when we finalize it, that you can see here in uh, the 3D viewer, which, which is just online, that you can see which number it is. So here we have the group for the Wentworth uh, from House of Origin, and here you see the numbers. So if you say, oh, what number was this one? And if I click on it, it's the HF31.2. So you can see them here as individual baluster uh, grouped for each um, of the series that they are in. So we have here the Regency panels or other panels here. You see the Alto series seems to be very popular or I've seen many customers using that. But here there are more traditional ones we, we have in there as well, all the panels. Um, and then you can start using them as well in patterns. So if I click on this one, you see that when we make a baluster, we can put uh, different spacing in there and we can start combining it uh, in, the, in the job itself. So here you see, uh, how that could uh, look like an example uh, patterns uh, that we already set up uh, in the database, but it's still in the beginning a little bit. And and uh, and obviously these are just examples, right? You can just use your own patterns or your own imagination how you would like to use these these parts. Mm -hmm. So how that works in Stercon itself? Um, if I select here properties, uh, balustrades. Uh, let's see if I have Seville. So here you see I changed from one model to another and you see that where it was before just plain uh, big uh, balusters. Now it's the Seville one. If I change to properties of the bal one. balustrades mm -hmm. uh, and I say iron. So this is something that Estefan set up. So <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous because I didn't practice this. So um, anyway, so, but you see here, this is something that, that Estefan already prepared. And this is something that we will uh, start fine tuning for the most popular ones that we already also gonna copy in our standard database. But again, this is something that you can change on the fly as well, right? If I go here to properties of this balustrade and I say here, I want to have twice this one apply, okay then you see I get two of these, then one of the two of these. So you can change on the fly how that looks. Um, maybe on a, on a stair, that's maybe more interesting. So here we see a 3D from just a little stair and here on the rake. So same thing here, properties, balustrades. Um, I, I go to the slots. In this case, I just take another pattern and you can have, you can select on the fly different uh, balusters or you can just uh, select whatever you want and say apply and then it applies that to that balustrade so this is similar as what we had before same here on the rake if i go properties of this balustrade um, slots and i take another one let's say the one with 12 apply so you see now we have these uh, 
uh, HF12 in there. If I change that on the fly with the 13 one and I say apply, and you see it's a different baluster um, and so forth. Uh, just that you have an idea that you can change this on the fly. So the patterns does may give a help of giving your customer a quick look um, how it could be. Uh, but obviously you have to set up your database and you have to add these balusters, which we uh, have now available as well in your database in case you already use uh, Stericon, have your own database uh, set up. Um, any questions from anybody about this? Uh, we will be able to send you a link as well if you want, if you send us an email. Uh, you, we can send you a link to these 3D files and, and we can show you more in a one-to-one -one meeting if you want. But anybody, uh, a question about this database or about these stair parts? You're not gonna like my question. Robert. I... You're not gonna like my question. If you go back to the iron balustrade that you just had up there a little bit ago with the newels, yeah um you gotta make what appears the one before that uh you could use that one that's fine just change the new there you go right there okay one of the things that we teach in the class and i can't touch the screen and tell you but right where the turn newel is where it's to cut the deepest from the lathe to the baluster to the first baluster that's where the sphere yeah, but I, I, I know what you're going for. And, and actually, I didn't prepare this. First of all, what you see here, uh, that uh, these newels, I, uh, if you go to this, and then we have to go on because otherwise we don't have a time right. for, for the other ones. So you see here, this is an over the, it's underside of the hand roll. So this should have been better if you reference this to the upper side and you say, well, I want three inch extra. And then the start and end, if you go to the properties of the balustrades, there are a lot of things that we can set up as a parameter, but we uh, actually give on the maximum distance between the balusters. So uh, the sphere of four inch is, 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 is as, a, as a general there, but if it has turned areas, then you would say uh, whatever is, is the difference, we would set that up as, the, as, as a little bit less. And also we can set up a start and end gap. If I don't do that, it just equals it out. If I say a specific start and end gap, then it will uh, keep it to that. So in case that you would like to have this one um, at three and a half distance from this newel because of you have here the, the turned area, then we can do that as well. So that there are some, some options uh, in there. So you can play around with these uh, settings. Okay, but thank you for asking. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, we have a baluster class, so it's it's good to mention that also to the ones uh, that are joining now that uh, they can find on the SMA website that we have a balustrade uh, class. How do I get back to my presentation uh, from current slides? Okay, um, let's go here. I had a picture from both of them. So I thought, why not to use it? So we had on the Edinburgh meeting before Corona, we had a meeting in 2019. And uh, so this is Dennis and this is Bob King. And um, we didn't know how to switch from one screen to another. So we decided uh, a few days ago that we just had a meeting, I recorded it. And that's the thing that I'm showing now. But if you have any questions, uh, please uh, ask, uh, uh, after I show the movie. And first I will do Dennis and then I will do Bob and, uh, and Nate. So here's Stair South. So I start the movie with sounds. In our neck of the woods, we basically, after the framer gets the walls up and the floor system on, we go directly out to take hard measurements of the, basically the opening and the end walls. And um, <clears throat> we bring them back it used to be a pain process to do it in AutoCAD. So what we've done here, we've cut out a 20-minute process to a five-minute process. I can basically uh, create a floor opening and create a flight of stairs, determine my landing height. And this is something that I would send directly to the builder and the framer. I would email it to them as soon as I produce it. 
that way the framer can go ahead and frame the landing in and I tell them exactly how far down to pull it. And of course, all I did was take nine rises times the rise, came up with this measurement, rounded it off to a sixteenth to make it simple for framer, and told them how deep to build it and how high. I say pull down because we don't like pulling off concrete. So we pull down from sub subfloor to subfloor. And very simple process turned a 20-minute process into a five-minute process for us, and we can um, check it out, make sure it's what we want, and then we just simply recalculate the production data, and um, and right here, I've got all my production parts right here ready to go. That's the way I do it. Even though we still hand cut our treads, pull them out of a box and hand cut them, we still need all this info for the risers and the skirt boards. It's basically where where we use Staircon the most. And I can simply take and export these files directly into my into Staircon DXF files. And I pull up my builder and I'm able to save it right there. And you see I've already got it in there. So when I go to Alpha Cam, I can just input my DXF and open it. There we go. So on this stringer right here, I simply just go to Tool Direction, go to Inside, Manual, and then I'll pick a spot down here, close, and I go to of my uh, seven degree pocket, and there it is. On the skirt board, I kind of do it the long way, but I explode. Sister tells me there's a faster way, but I'm still learning it. And then I put tool directions, and I like cutting from the top of the board. There we go. And then I'll just pick a quarter inch comp, quarter inch compression bit, and it's ready to, ready to cut. So the challenge with this stair in this house was the staircase actually started off in the opposite direction. And uh, we were having problems with headroom height with the roof line on the second floor. And we wound up reversing the stair and we started off here. And it was a big help because we were able to actually draw in the roof line and um, give the uh, my builder at the time and the architect an idea of what this was kind of going to look like. So we got it to this point, and then they made a few changes. Uh, the floor-to-floor -floor changed. So we had to add in a mid-rest landing, and they wanted the bottom stair to really kind of bloom out, um, flare out. Uh, so we went to um, the next design, and we talked about possibly putting the mid-rest landing near the bottom. And so we worked that, and we just put some generic rail in for the time being. But, but as you can see, that's not really the look we were looking for. And it didn't allow us to really um, explode the stair at the bottom to make it a grand staircase. So then we went and we changed it again, and we decided to put the midrest landing in the center of the stair in the center of the window, which was a big help because that was the selling point right there that uh, really set this thing off. And then down at the bottom, we were able to explode it on the right side with the big belly treads and really turned it into a grand stair. And we finalized the rail. And um, one of the big pluses also on this stair was the lamination feature um, on our curb stringers. We call them curb stringers. Um, we, we laminate them out of quarter, quarter inch plywood. And the really nice thing about stair pump is that it figures in all the laminations. So basically, just about everything that you see there, um, we didn't even have to modify, uh, which was a re really big help on this one, because this one would have been kind of tough to do an AutoCAD. And we just basically took the whole house here, that whole room in front of those windows, and designed these two stairs and was able to give that back to the architect. They put it in the plans, and as you can see, it, it really turned out much nicer from then we first started. So 
we created the, the uh, main stair first, and we had to incorporate the walls to create lower stair off of the main stair, um, which was important. We had to make sure we had proper headroom as we were going down the, the lower level stair. And the walls were created so when we sat the balcony rail on the main level on, on this area right here and this area right here that we had, you know, a, a good corner to uh, terminate these rails into. We did all that so the rails wouldn't go past, of, of course. Once again, as you can see, this landing is centered in that window. And um, actually, the client saw this and decided they want that floor system. So the rail actually comes up and turns back, back to the wall was the final outcome on this one. So this is the, this is the final, final drawing, um, the descending volute. And all the transitions were all built into to, to the rail. Everything bolted right up. You can see it here. Those are some uh, pretty interesting um, transitions going on. Well, I wanted to point out right here, these boards were patterns that we made to form the curb stringer on both sides. So this is basically templates that we made and took out the job site and uh, we finished up the, the curbing on the job site for these long balcony and this short balcony and this helped give us the correct transition for the curb stringer so, so the rail would match it. Um, very helpful just making those templates. Well this there um, is being built in a house down in Savannah. And we started this project about almost a year and a half ago. And the customer came to us with a design and a, and a, a hand drawing that somebody had already done. And um, on this one, I was I created the stair in AutoCAD. And we were when we imported those lines into StairCon and was able to create this there. Um, I created it in AutoCAD at the time because I wasn't really familiar that familiar with the StairCon and we had just started using it. But it turned out wonderful. Um, it's an elliptical and um, just the whole process with using StairCon and the balustrade layout really, really helped out through the transitions and the different runs that you get into. And you can notice here on the left, we were able to create a custom newel for the customer to look at, which it decided not to go with. Um, but it was nice to be able to create that and show that. And, um, the installation and uh, just the, the process of being able to export my file to a, a source that we use that cuts five access parts for us on the CNC. So uh, the rails, the flute, everything just fit perfect. We just bolted it up on site and raised the rails and put the balusters. And so this was a... Um, a, a big help and then I want to talk a little bit about the cut stringers and the process that we use to export them into AlphaCam and we split them up and was able to basically laminate these cut stringers together and um, you know what once again everything fit like a glove it was super helpful and every one of these threads being custom was a big help. We did not use the baluster holes on this one, but on the next one, 
I can promise you I'll be using them. And um, yeah, it just made it super simple. For instance here, um, Staircon Adam automatically turns the tread upside down and lays out the, you know, the, the machining lines for me. And when I, when I break into Alpha Cam, we basically just add the tooling to cut this. And it also, it's pretty simple here to get a blank size of the piece of material I'm going to need to cut this tread out. Um, makes it effortless. So here you can see no, number three, um, just like the bullnose tread, it comes in already upside down, and I just add my tool and returns, cove, risers, everything is perfect. The miters, which you see they're not a 40, an exact 45, which we all know how that can be tedious. Uh, you don't even have to worry about it with stair cut. You just import it in, apply the tooling, and, and cut it, and it all fit perfect. And here's the returns, and they're again very simple to brought these in on a stair cut and added tooling to and was able to nest them. And there again, everything just cut perfect. Now I want to talk a little bit about the coat. Just bringing that in from Staircon, you can see where automatically the miters are already there. And uh, once again, we bring it in Alpha Camp. We apply the tooling, and this is just one nose. I'm sorry, one nesting that we did out of several pieces of cove. Uh, this was all American cherry, and um, you know, once again, the return, the returns, the miters, everything was perfect. And this was the beam that we put up underneath the stringers. So these are all the cuts for the laminated beams that we built up underneath the, the stair carriage, which we've never used a, pro, a program to cut those. We just, you know, we willy nilly it, man. We ripped plywood and stuck it up in there. But you can see all the twists and turns and the cuts that were involved here. So after we built the car carriage, it was very simple to come in underneath and to laminate these support beams right to the stair carriage, um, which there again, it was just a huge time saver. And as you can see, a huge ma material save. Yep, and you can see here where the structural beams are here on the inside of the stringer. And with the, the the different radiuses and the the um, the different radiuses change in here in the elliptical, um, even had the tail end straighten out. Uh, once once again, it was a huge uh, huge help for us to be able to just have all that to where we could just pre nest. Yeah, here you see it here where it's. We just butt it up tight to the bottom of the to the riser and uh, go. And you you can see how that wouldn't have flowed so smoothly. Just trying to rip plywood at a certain dimension. So all the uh, little up easings and over easings and twists and turns were all calculated in and. The bottom of the stair it just looked absolutely be, be, <clears throat> excuse me, beautiful. Yeah, so here's our quarter-inch pine sh stringers that we nest in sheets. There again, these came straight from StairCon, and they're already dimensioned to layer. And um, as it goes through the radiuses, um, they just they fit perfect. Um, so it's very simple to bring them in out of the stair con and to, to nest them. And there again, you can imagine all that cut <laughs> by hand would be almost impossible. And these marry up right with 
the birch stringers, which we'll show you next. The birch, the birch cut stringer is just a simple quarter inch bolt, Baltic birch flatwood. Um, and that's the whole job right there in two, two sheets of quarter inch birch. That's the left and the right, right stringer. So pretty impressive. So I'm going to close this now. Um, I, I suggest that we go directly to uh, Bob King and Nate. And then afterwards, um, any questions that you have, please uh, uh, unmute yourself and, and, and let us know. Or, or type uh, when you see something during the movie that you had from Dennis or that you will see now from Bob King and, and Nate. Um, please type uh, in the chat box your question so that we make sure that uh, both uh, Bob, Nate and Dennis can, uh, can answer any of, of the questions that you have. Good afternoon. I'm Bob King from King & Company. We're a stair manufacturer here in New Hampshire that uh, we've been in business for 35 years. Uh, we produce high-end custom stairs with a wide variety. Uh, we have been a parametric Staircon user for four years now, and we'd like to show you some of the benefits uh, and some of the differences uh, from going to a 3D CAD to a stair-specific parametric uh, 3D software. We will go now from a simple stair scenario, trying to cover our different bases, is a simpler stair underneath, and that is the first floor. There is the second floor. We have helplines. I'm deleting now just so you can see where they are that were in there that are simple construction lines that allowed you to utilize in drawing and referencing points, getting dimension. Here's a stair that is a little bit uh, unique. It was a very specific uh, situation that I worked a long time to resolve with this customer. Um, but you can see there's the upper level. We can go up to the third floor. There's the balcony balustrade. Everything can be isolated. Um, elevations. First floor. We can look at just the right skirts. We can look at all the different skirts, balustrades. Tools. Then we can go to 3D. Here is a model here that, as I say, there was a simpler stair to a lower level. It was a walkout basement. Here is a unique stair. You can see these transparent flats are actually glass balusters. There will be a picture after that shows this stair completed and installed. Um, all of these posts are structural, part of the process. There's a post here that was hollowed out in the center in turn so that it actually encapsulates a lolly column. Um, metal balusters, all of the different components to your specifications, bull nose styles of tread, landing nosing details, all these are easily modified saved in as a file, which you can easily click on um, as you go along. For instance, a tread. If you want to change the thickness, you can change the thickness. Profiles. You can change the nose profile. You could do 8th inch top and bottom. You can see what it is right there. You can make the changes, cove moldings. If you want to use gold, you see what the profile is. All of these things are quickly changed. Riser details, you have all the options of how you set it up. The nice thing with this software is that you can set up your all of your standards in your database, how you typically want to produce something. Uh, starting steps, you have all the options. To, adjust and modify everything as you go. Let's go to the 
next model. Here's the 3D of this stair. If you look at it, every riser is curved, curved serpentine landings. You can integrate a ceiling, show the ceiling in it. Um, completely modified the skirt, how you want to transition the bottoms. All that is 100% easily adjusted. Here we have custom balusters that the customer had seen a picture that they wanted, and so those are, are all in there. Uh, readily and easily changed, custom newels to match. Uh, the nice thing for people that are starting to use the 3D um, parametric software, StairCon will allow you to take a 2D simple AutoCAD drawing uh, and bring this in and create the stair using Create from Lines and Arts. So it allows us to utilize what we already are real comfortable with in basic CAD, bring that in and create a stair from it, which is a, a tremendous asset in starting out and learning. It's a, a terrific feature. Uh, as in a typical job like this, we initially did a design based on initial concepts from the customer. She came back with some specific things and said, can I modify the bottom step in this way? We made a modification. She said, that's great. Now can I do a couple more things? And we were very quickly and easily able to modify send them back out, send them the 3D models back out, never have to meet them face to face, can both be carrying on very easily uh, through the internet, which all we have to do is go into Sketchfab, we send this out, this is what you would send to the customer. You can have your logo up there, you can set your background, you come in, this is what your customer would see. I'm left clicking my mouse, I can center mouse and panning it, left click, I can rotate it around, they can look at it from any, any angle they want, they can come in and approach the stair, they can come from the top, they can look at it. This is a tremendous selling feature. We can, with this software, be able to introduce doors. We can introduce windows. Um, these are all things that this does the selling for you. When you come in here, you can put a note right here. Clean it without a newel for a discussion with them. This is a, a, a combination of things that allow this software to really perform. So I think it's in your benefit to consider going to this type of software. Uh, the advantages over regular 3D, um, like I say, is a tremendous asset in being able to send this out, add walls, do all that stuff readily and quickly, be able to shift on the fly with materials, make changes, have everything upgrade because of the parametrics. Other big benefit of what you have when you go to a stair-specific 3D parametric software is you now can, with a couple clicks of the mouse, generate a complete cut list for all your treads, risers, balusters, everything that can go out into the shop. That is a tremendous amount of labor saving. And then if you take it to the next step to go to CAM, which we do, uh, Nate, our CNC person, will uh, show you CAM, what the CAM will do and what it generates. So this is a project that's already been designed in CAD. I have taken and laid out the stringers exactly how we intend to create them. Here's the right elevation, left elevation. It's got this waterfall. Um, I recalculated my production here, recalculate production data, and I would choose uh, strings, risers, and treads. And then once that process is, I'd go to production and this shows me all of the strings as they're going to be created. 
and then we can go through And then here's all the treads, and so on and so forth. Once that's done, I will go to create production file, and this will start CAM. Um, so here we've got risers, treads, steps, same thing, and the stringers. So I'll just click um, process items. It's going to go through and actually process everything, the risers, treads, and stringers, and it's going to create the G-code that's going to go out to my CNC machine. So here are the risers, and this shows all your tool path tool paths. So it does a contour, does a pocket for uh, pocket screws. Here's another one, contour, pocket for pocket screws, and drills for attachment to, to the back edge of the tread. Come down here and I can show a stringer. So it cuts the perimeter, cuts the wedged pockets, drills for a screw through for the treads and risers. Then I can go to my treads. So tread cuts the perimeter, cuts a uh, pocket to receive the riser. Um, if this had uh, returns on it, you would cut a pocket for a pocket screw for the return. But and that's it. So, nice elliptical stair. Every tread is different. I can recalculate this for, for production. In this case, I'm doing handrails and treads. The skirts and risers are all bent, so we'll laminate those. I'll, I'll use uh, a DXF from this to uh, create my forms for all the risers and to laminate the strings. Here's my treads, and each tread is different. But from here, I can go and file print production drawing, and I'll do it as a PDF. Print, and there it is. So I can just spit that out to the shop floor. They can uh, lay up all their treads from there. Then go back into my software for StairCon and go to create production file. And here again we got wreath rail <coughs> and treads. I'll just process one tread for this one just so we you can see. Then go to one section of wreath here process that and out for production so I mean literally takes minutes <clears throat> to process the uh, entire G code for both treads and, and handrail and send it out to the floor it's a very large uh, time saver for us so this particular project is an ellipse so there's a bunch of changing arcs. You can see the strings are broken here um, based on the arcs that created the ellipse. Um, what I've done in this particular case is I've joined this rail all the way up through as one piece. And I'll view it on center line. And so what I'll do is I'll view it on center line and then drop it down on top of the stair. And then I'll take my overall length and split these up into equal sections so that each section of rail is pretty close to the same length. All right. So here's the top of the stair. It ovaries at the level of the top. You see it's a short changing radius. And this piece here is in the middle of the stair. 
It's on the left side. It's got a very low pitch line, but a, an, and a large arc. But and here again, it, it's each one of those pieces would take me uh, quite a long time to program if I was going to do it from a from a 3D model from from SolidWorks or Rhino or, or anything like that. Where in this case, I can just draw it in CAD, process it for production, and off it goes. Now. In the past, when we used to do things with um, uh, SolidWorks, if the rail were to change or the pitch line were to change, or the floor-to-floor -floor height, any of that would happen. We'd have to remodel that in um, in SolidWorks and then then reprogram for AlphaCam. In this case, the floor-to-floor -floor height changes. We change it in CAD, but then process for production, and it's done. It's just it's a huge huge time saver. You don't have to go through and start all over from scratch. It's a pretty simple edit to make. We're going to show uh, another project that um, has multiple levels of floor. As you can see, these treads are all askew, which really makes for a comfortable stair. But the important thing with that is what it does is, is you take a straight stair that an architect initially had three straight runs and curves and then straight runs is the rail doesn't flow smooth and clean. It, it's very blocky, chopped up. You end up with odd winders. This makes the stair that the path line, walk line, pitch line, everything is very consistent. We'll quickly look to 3D. Here's a 3D stair. We start at a lower level. All underneath, we can show the wall, put the wall in, the curves, there's a stair in this particular case. The bottom of the stair was all done uh, with the same uh, material, in case it was butter or not. Faces, color-wise, we can transition and change all of these things, go back to plan views, and we go back and view hide. We can turn the stair off. We just have the floor opening. If you want to be able to send out drawings for uh, F3, we can put dimensions in there, modify the dimensions. We can change the height. Uh, we can pull the dimensions away, move them. We have all the controls of what you normally would with any of the CAD. So here I'm processing the stair for process, processing the treads, the risers, and the wreath handrail. Um, so this has been processed. We've got treads. We've got risers and wreath handrail. So now I'll go and create production file. This will come into cam. I'm going to open the PRX that I just created. And here I have wreath handrail drilled for uh, balusters. We've got straight handrail here also that we'll also process. Risers. And treads. So again, I'll calculate, I mean, uh, process items. <clears throat> okay, so I've got handrail here, straight rail. Let's get the profile on it. And it's drilled on the pitch for the rail, I mean for the balusters. I can go down to wreath parts. Here again, here's all the tool paths. And again, these are cut and drilled for... Um, the balusters to cut through the tangent tangent of the rail for tangent handrail method, and these treads are a different profile than what we just showed you. So this is actually an inch and three quarter thick tread, so you're able to run um, a bunch of different styles of profile, whatever you've got or that you typically do. Um, it's all um, able to be edited uh, in the configuration for CAM. It also goes with handrail. I mean, we run a lot of different styles of handrail. Um, and the 
profile can be easily uh, added into the database and machined in whatever profile you have and change the settings to work. It can also be changed so you can be plowed out for fillet or drilled for balusters, different size holes, whatever you need to do. It's all very editable and customizable um, as you need. And also from this point over here in the G-code, it generates the work volume for the part so you can get your um, blank size for each wreath section from there and put that out to the shop floor. Back from um, the CAD side, you can create cut lists and so you go file and um, print production drawings. So there's all the skirts for the Mathers job that we processed earlier. You just print this out, get it out to the shop floor so they know what they're making for, for blanks. And the same goes for treads. Risers are put out a little bit differently. Um, I don't create a production drawing like this because they're simpler. I just give them basically a, it prints out a a list of risers based on their length and width, and they just rip um, process from there. The great thing about this is that, like for this particular stair, every one of these treads is uh, different. You know, so when I would program, before we had StairCon, I'd have to pull each of those treads off by hand and program an alpha cam. This processing for production is much quicker as far as outputting G-code for these parts. Um, questions? I have one. This is Paul with eTemplate. Uh, Sister, what file formats does StairCon take? Uh, so we can uh, import, I, I guess you, you're uh, referring to that. So we have import and export functionality. So we have different file formats to export like an IFC or DEA. But importing, we do always with a DXF. And that can be a 2D or a 3D uh, uh, DXF. And so from, for instance, the, the, the Leica, the 3D Disto, um, I, I've done a, a few projects myself as well, where we can just uh, scan the lines and, and create a stair from lines actually, uh, even when they are in 3D. Uh, so um, I can even show you some some customers that uh, that are doing that. I know that uh, Kirkwood, they, they had like a huge, big uh, metal uh, built staircase and they needed to put wood over it also the 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 the, the capping on it and the handrails need to follow it so i, I uh, have some examples uh, and i think we made also a movie from that that you can see that you can what we showed in this movie of a 2d drawing where we created the stair from lines we can do that the same with uh, a 3d so we we have uh, the outside of the stair that we have to have mm -hmm. as lines or arcs and the thread lines but if the thread lines have a z value you can say to Stercom, please use the Z value from those thread lines. Uh, and they, they can indicate or the front of the nosing or the front of the riser or the back of the riser. For instance, uh, we have in Europe, uh, a lot of customers building stairs over concrete. Uh, so they typically would say, I scan basically what would be uh, initially the back of the riser because that's the front of the concrete. It has to be in front of it. Otherwise you have to break away a lot of concrete, which you uh, normally don't want to do right so uh, yeah. so those that feature we we, we quite uh, have quite a lot of customers really liking that so so yeah if you have a 2d drawing you can create it from there but if you have a 3d Leica uh, the 3d disto and you you scan your lines in 3d um, yeah. and I've seen you doing that same with uh, e template with the lunch and learn that we had so those yeah. things when you scan the threads we can uh, select those lines and Stericon will create on top of that uh, the stair. So that was a huge time saver and a perfect link. We love yeah. the 3D disto. So you got a, a good thing there. In, any plan on, on importing solids? Well, we have, um, like I said, a new 3D solid modeler. Um, the thing what we can import now are STL files. So if you have a mesh or something like that, then you can import that as well. So as you saw, 
uh, if I, if I can show here, uh, I don't want to take up a lot of this time. I okay, can, but but three D files we can import as uh, when they are SDL files. But uh, like I said, I'm I'm not a programmer. I, I'm just using the software. But I do know that uh, our development team is is very very um, happy with the uh, development that we started to. Uh, quite a while ago to, to implement that uh, new solid modeler that we have uh, yeah. in there now that makes more things possible. Some things that we uh, have on our wish list for, for, for quite a while, we will now be soon be more easily implemented in Stericon because we have that solid modeler. So, and one of the things that we do have now customers asking for is also what about other solids? Uh, so that will be one of the things that, that for sure uh, will be possible, but uh, just reach out to me and we can have a one-to-one -one meeting to see uh, what, what things you are thinking of and uh, to Definitely. see how we uh, can discuss that. Super. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. Are there any other questions? Okay. So it's a, it looks like there aren't any other questions. Okay. Uh, we had... Then uh, one last thing, but we are already 60 minutes in. So I, I, this is just when when you would be looking for software and you, you haven't uh, had experience yet, or maybe you have experience, then, then you are very much uh, asking questions maybe from things that didn't work for you before. So that's, that's then you learn it the hard way. Uh, but we do have some general questions that you can ask uh, in case that you start looking for software. Uh, and it, it doesn't need to be just manufacturer software like Stericon. If you general think of software, there are some some general things that, that we have a list from um, that, that you could ask about uh, how the developer is, what the background is, uh, how they do the training, the implementation, the maintenance service. All these things, those are parts when you start with 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 software. If 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 it's a never-ending story with paying extra for training, or do they have just a fixed uh, price for that? And also about the software, like like Paul was asking, what can it import? What can it export? What things would you would like to do with it? So all these kind of things, uh, we we do have a, a a document with with some general questions that we also that Terra will put on the SMA uh, uh, website. Um, and uh, maybe I can ask Bob to tell a little bit about general questions, if you have that. Uh, we, we just started with the SMA about an SMA membership uh, or a mentorship program. So I don't know if Bob, if you can tell us a little bit about that. Uh, I can, thank you. Um, I just want to make a quick comment about um, Stercon. We as most companies have um, progressed over the years, we used AutoCAD, we used AlphaCam, uh, we spent a ton of time having to do cut lists and everything else. And as our company grew, um, I think one of the things that you folks will all agree on, getting good skilled labor was really an issue. So we kind of went with a different approach and said, okay, because we can't get a lot of good skilled people, we need to keep our business growing. So one of the routes that we elected to do was to give our people the best equipment. We have three and five axis CNCs. And then the next step was to go to the software that gave us more flexibility, cut our time down, having to do cut lists and, and all of that to be able to put out a lot more work. So I think one of the things you'll find is, is if you get involved with a software like this is it will change the whole way your business goes um, for the positive. Um, I think one of the things that you need to be aware of when choosing any of this software is what is the company going to do to support you? Uh, there is a lot of training involved in learning the software. This software is tremendous with flexibility. We have yet to have a style of stair. We have not been able to execute through StairCon. I am overly impressed with the uh, flexibility of it and what it can do for you. Uh, but I think more importantly is the uh, 
relationship with somebody that's going to be teaching you how to utilize the software. And Sitzer is the biggest asset that Staircon has in that regard, as well as yourself or myself. And even if you pick another company, Compass or a different software, when you are looking at purchasing something, it's a major investment of dollars. It's a major investment of time to learn. You need to make sure you are getting the proper service, support, and training. Uh, you need to be able to work well with whoever you're doing. So that, that works with any software that you, you're doing and extremely important with this type of software. So onto the mentorship program, uh, we at the SMA are gonna be launching a mentorship program that we're looking for people to come in that are willing to participate, to answer questions. If someone has a specific question or a new member, um, I know I had spoke with a new member and had good conversations with him, was able to send them off to Earl to help him, send them off to um, you know, a few other people. Uh, if you are interested in getting involved, we would love to have you. We'd love to get a, an email either to Tara or myself and um, tell me that you are interested. I will touch base with you and what it will involve would be a limited amount of time on your part, but periodically someone might need some assistance on something that you might be able to excel and just give them a little bit of time and uh, network with them. So if you are interested, we would love to have uh, have your name and we would certainly get a hold of you. Thank you very much. I hope this was a good learning session for you. If anyone has questions after the fact and want to talk to either Nate or I, feel free to reach out to us. You can get our contact information right off from the uh, membership directory. Thank you. Great. Bob, Sitza, Dennis, Nate, thank you so much for your time today and helping us and just letting us understand better what software can do for us in our businesses. So if anyone has any questions, please stick around. But if not, we will see you next time. Thank you so much. Hey, I have a quick question. Sure, David. This is David with Brookfield. Um, how, how does Staircon handle horizontal balustrade? I saw a lot of vertical balustrade um, examples and glass. How does it um, handle horizontal balustrade? Well, we call horizontal balusters, uh, um, we call them bottom rails. And uh, I can show you here maybe some examples or let's see what King Stairs did. Do you have some examples that you did? Yes, it's in this one for Arling Mill Barn. Sorry? The Mill Barn project is a spiral stair with a horizontal balustrade. So here you have it. Here you have an example, I think. Yeah. yeah. And, and Mill Barn was the other one. Uh, so we have also some models set up for that. So we, yeah, we can just. Uh, Put in horizontal bars. If I maybe quickly give you an overview here, if I go to the collections. I think Dennis, didn't you? Something that Dennis also did, I think. Let's see here. Yes. Because uh, you do more contemporary as well, right? Glass. Wires. We've done, we've done the uh, stainless steel wires. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. So basically, for us, we we can we can have uh, any shape or style as bottom rails, and and you can let them to follow uh, the stair, and you can say how many do you want. Like here, you see, we have it one at the bottom and one at the top. I, I just take some <laughs> things from uh, from Dennis now. So here you see uh, some balusters in in, in between. But uh, uh, if I go to our overview with uh, collections from the balustrades. So we can do combinations as well. If you see here, these are some glass balusters, but here you see 
a model that we have set up for a cable on the wall. Um, so this is a handrail over the post. What we call handrail over the post is actually that uh, that the handrail continues its journey in the same pitch. And here mm -hmm. you see that the, the, the wall is underneath and you have the shoe rail on top. So basically this part here and this part here, we call the same thing. It's it's a bottom rail and, and it can have a different material and it can have, have different uh, shapes. So here you see this one here is like uh, round. And this one here has like a shoe rail with, with some, so it's just a different profile that we put on it. Uh, but we can also combine things. Uh, there should be here the combination of some iron bars and uh, glass panels. Mm -hmm. and, and now I don't find it. <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhere here. It's, it's, it's a part of our database. Right to the left. It's a, yes. it's a little left. There you go. Oh, here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, <laughs> my wife always says it's when it's in front of me, I don't see it. So I, I need somebody else to help me finding things. So here you see basically also these, these are also panels. Um, mm -hmm. But now I paid, I, I, we said it's glass. I had, I had another customer in, in, in Canada uh, showing it actually, maybe I can even find it. They did like a, a mesh panel in there. So then they, instead of giving it glass transparent, we, we do it. Uh, maybe I have here an example on, uh, um, let's see, Stercom. Stercom users. So if you like, I can send you these links uh, that you can have a look also, what, because this gives just an idea of what, what you can design with Stercom. Some examples that, or I did, or some customers did. Oh, here you see something that one of our customers uh, did. This is an example from Burmeister. So here you see also some horizontal railing uh okay. on the floor and on the uh and here this is a little bit more uh tricky because you you have to see uh yeah where to get it if it's not on the stair but hanging on the on the ceiling but just see some some ideas what we are doing here you see it on the on the on the wall again it's the same model basically what i showed before but now you see it as a switchback uh with some some iron uh bars uh, but the one that I want to show with the mesh screen, I don't see directly. Right there? Is that it? Black metal? Uh, oh, here. You see, I need a, always a girl <laughs> to help me finding stuff. Okay, so here you see it's actually, this is not a glass panel, but it has this like a mesh uh, just to visualize it a little bit. So anyway, uh, so basically what we identify, we have vertical parts or balusters, horizontal parts are bottom rails. And then you can start, uh, uh, this is also an example from, uh, from, from Dennis, uh, one of the things he did. But was this a little bit giving you an idea? Uh, yeah, so we, we um, manufacture the linear panel system for LJ Smith and designed the Denali panel system. And it's basically a component um, with horizontal balustrade that you can fit onto the stair. So I'm just okay. curious on the flexibility of that. It would be similar to a House of Forging's panel, only horizontal. Um, yeah, but... if, if maybe if you could send me some information about it, I, I'm more than happy to, 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 to double check with you how, how that would work. Okay, yeah, I'll email you separately some information. We'll see, see what, uh, how that would yeah. work. Awesome, that would be nice, thanks. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome. I have a question also. Go ahead, yeah. Andre. Yes, if somebody that's never really used the CAD drawings and all that stuff, how many hours of training do you figure before you could start navigating the software and into you know simple L shapes, the circulars, and all that? Let me let me address that. If you if you're doing more standardized, I, I think, uh, typical stairs, I think you're going to find that you're going to be able to start producing your stairs quite quickly. Um, 
what has taken us more time than anything is we tend to get involved with some odd, quirky, out of the ordinary. Um, and some of those things require uh, additional learning in the process, but StairCon will get you through all of L stairs, U stairs, all of that stuff really quite quickly. And I think the one thing that I can speak to, the biggest asset is with, with learning StairCon is that Sitzer is an extremely good teacher, a patient teacher, and um, even somebody like myself that forgets oftentimes and have to go back and ask a second time, he always is patient. And that's an important aspect in, in getting involved with software. You need somebody that's going to teach you at what pace you need to learn the way you need to learn it. But I think doing straightforward L's and things like that, those are gonna come along quite quickly. When you get into that, odd stuff, that that will we constantly still be working with with quirky odd stuff. We'll have to go back and get a little bit of assistance, but a phone call away, Sitsa will help us. And I have yet to produce a stare that we have not been able to do in stair coming. So. I think the one thing that I would suggest to you is to make it a priority and put aside a certain amount of time to really learn the basics of the software rather than trying to do it over a long, slow period, put you know aside four or five hours a week or whatever and, and just start doing it. And I think you'll find in a very short time the implications of getting that up and running will will uh, prove to be um, very fruitful for you. I mean, here's an odd stair. Look, if you look at this stair in particular, these are octagon posts. This rail had to come in and be fit and cut around these octagon posts. It was very quirky. You know, these, these are things that you know, just to be able to produce the parts, cut the rails, fit everything, drill everything, um, you know, create all this. It, it, it's, if we had to do this, well, actually, I'm going to say this. This stair started out, that was one of the earliest ones that we did. We drew it all in AutoCAD. We drew all the elevations in AutoCAD. The customer kept making changes in AutoCAD. And to go back and have to redesign and chase all the changes in AutoCAD, you know, that's when errors happen. We always found that once you started making changes from a design to chase that and catch the elevation up and make, catch up all the views, the amount of time was, for one thing, was extremely frustrating. Two, we always found that there would be things that slipped through the cracks that didn't get brought up to speed with the changes. The great thing with a, a parametric software is if you make the changes, all the changes happen. So you're making your adjustments one time and everything upgrades and balusters, handrails, everything just happens. If the floor to floor changes, they come back to you and says, oh, well, we're going to build up the floor now. It's two inches higher. Not a big deal. You go in and make a few simple changes and it all upgrades. It. That's the benefit of the parametric software. And so in answer to your question, um, starting out doing basic stairs, I think you'll find you can do that very quickly. Um, and you'll start out with the basics. And even if you just design the stair, you can find that once you get comfortable doing a few of those, introduce your railings. It, it, um, it's straightforward and easy enough to understand. Um, to add to that, if you, know, if, if you have not used software before, um, it's going to be easier for you to pick up and learn StairCon because you're not trying to unlearn the way a different product works. So we came from CAD. Stircon is not like CAD. So you think like CAD when you're trying to draw. 
but that's not exactly what you want to do. You got to think in a different way. So if you're starting from scratch, not having used anything else, it's going to come very quickly, I, I believe. But um, I would agree. go from the different softwares and bounce around. You got to, you know, you just got to think differently in, the, in those terms and how the how the software yeah. works and yeah. what the software wants. All right. Because we've used Compass in the past and we use AutoCAD, you know, a few of the salesmen were using that and Bob's right, you know, when you make a change and all that, sometimes something will slip through the crack, you won't pick up on it until you're out in the field, making, you know, putting the stuff together and then you realize the, you know, the mistake that could happen from that. So, One of the things that you have to do, and it, it's like anything else, is that you have to learn to trust what the software is producing for you. If you've laid everything out and you check everything, um, you know, we drill all of our treads, we drill our rails, we do all of that. And like Dennis said, once you trust that and you start doing it, you're gonna find that everything just fits and you eliminate a lot of problems. The one thing that by the, using this type of software, is you really, when you design it, you look at it, you check everything, you're eliminating the errors in the shop because you've done all the thinking. You know, they're, they're having straightforward guidelines with cut lists and, you know, another thing that is tremendous asset is be able to take this 3D model and take a picture of it in any view or multiple views and give it to the guys in the shop that are making the parts. How often do you find it, you know, guys are asking questions because they don't understand simply because they don't understand the end game of what they're producing. We find that they being able to understand and look at a 3D model, they can do a better job executing all the parts um, and, and all of their uh, functions that they're doing in the shop. That's a tremendous asset. Um, as you can see with all these models, a lot of the clients that I work for, I never see face to face. Some of them are overseas, some of them are away traveling for business. And you know, the 3D model allows us to set up a time or Zoom meeting or phone conversations and be able to be looking at the same thing and solve the problems of design. Uh, the one thing that architects love the 3D model, uh, customers do. My experience is that, having done this for a long time, is that women have a harder time envisioning three-dimensional than men do just by the virtue of how people uh, think. And the customer come back and they all understand what we're looking at. And they're able to ask intelligent questions, make good changes, um, just the, the resolution time and the redrawing time and everything has been cut down once you go to a, a software like this that can present what you have. So hopefully that answered your question. Yes, you did. Thank you. Thanks, Andre. Are there any other questions? We still have 23 people here. There must be some more questions. Don't be bashful about speaking up. Uh, <laughs> whether, whether you, no matter what it is, because we want, we want to make sure that all questions get answered. Okay. Going once. <laughs> <laughs> I have, go, ahead, Earl. go ahead. I have a quick comment. I just want to thank you guys for putting this on. It's really good. Great stuff. And, and it just reaffirms what my wife often tells me. It seems like you're wasting a lot of time. Because I'm one of the guys that do this in Rhino or AutoCAD. And like Bob just said, if you have someone who makes changes along the way you have to redraw the whole thing again it takes a tremendous amount of time you're wasting 
a lot of time. So thanks, guys. Well, I think in response to that, we all can appreciate the fact that the one thing that the most valuable people in your companies have the least of is time. And, you know, so taking a design, a concept, a design, and being able to get it to the shop and do it efficiently and not have to go backwards with redesigns and everything uh, is for us was a tremendous factor that led towards going to this type of software um, because it, it's very frustrating when you're doing 2D drawings to have to chase all that. And, you know, this eliminates it. So um, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, there's some terrific software out there, but this is really specific to our industry. And, um, you know, I do not know Compass. I know it's very similar, um, you know, but the fact that this particular software is so flexible to what you want to produce and, and to the way you want to produce stairs, um, you know, once you get it adapted and get your model set up and get all the basic functions of the way you want to produce a stair system, um, it becomes very straightforward. It, um, I, I'm just amazed at the complexity of some of the jobs that it handles. As far as the CNC part is concerned, our concern was when we started off with this was that, are we gonna be able to produce parts the way that we've always produced parts? And the short answer is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very customizable. It, um, it allows you to just set everything up the way that you normally work for the most part. And it's, it's, it's pretty seamless. I mean, there's there's always a learning curve to everything, but uh, it saved me a lot of time. You saw Dennis was outputting his DXF and going into Alpha Cam and having to program, you know, tread skirts, risers, and Alpha Cam. With the cam side of this, now I just spit that out and it's fast. Even the reef parts. I mean, it's it's a tremendous time saver um, when you go to that full package. It's just it's just couple clicks and, and away you go. Um, but in answer to your question about, um, what is it, A, was it El, El Eterno? Oh, Andre, yeah. What is it, I'm sorry. Yeah, Andre. Andre, I'm sorry, I mispronounced your name. In answer to your question, when I first got involved with StairCon, um, you know, once I got involved with Sitzer, I think I was one month's time going from saying, okay, I see the value of what this software has done for us as a company to taking the major step to investing in the CAM for both three axis and five axis. And I did that in a month's time, having started with Sitzer and learning uh, this software and being able to produce the stairs that we were producing and realizing that, okay, this is the right step for us. So um, it, hopefully that gave you a little bit more insight of what, I mean, and I, and I committed time to it because I, I knew that if it was going to happen, you, whether you're learning AutoCAD or anything else, you get out of it what you put into it for time to learn it. And the more you learn, the more um, you'll find that, you know, you, you always say, I don't know how we got by without doing this. Um, it's, a, it's a major forward step forward for, for most businesses. But um, I know a few of them that had tried it and they kind of set on it and they had tried to do it for an hour or two at a time and they failed because they didn't make the commitment to learn the software. You, it, it's as flexible and as easy as all of these blocks and everything are, you still have to learn all the basic processes. Um, so once you get through that, then it gets 
easier and easier in time. Is, are there days when there's some serious frustration? Absolutely. Anybody that tells you learning any new software, there are not going to be days that you want to pull your hair out, uh, isn't being honest. Well, here's a stare right here. That who's, mo who's turning that model around? You sit, sir? Yeah, just looking around. If, if you look at this model, this is a job that we have. If you rotate it around, this is a Boston brownstone. If you look at all, right. all the complexities of what the, the, this company I have worked with before, they came to us early on with the architect and said, look, we'd like to get you involved. This one's a quirky one. Can we get you involved early on? I resolved this whole 3D model in discussions with the architect and they implemented it in all of their drawings, which we had our foot in the door. We had, it's our, it was our job to lose right from the beginning because of what we can do with this. Right. Uh, and to be able to, you know, you, you can imagine trying to look at, at um, four or five floors, what it's like to be able to get a customer to resolve things and make decisions and whatnot. Um, so, you know, the design factor of it alone is tremendous asset, but ultimately um, going to the CAM, uh, you know, a company as small as we are with eight people, the amount of work that we put out is amazing. Um, you know, I mean, we more than doubled our sales with the same number of people once we got this fully right. implemented. So, okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions? We still got a bunch of people here. There must be some more hands that want to go up. We're happy to answer any and all questions, whether they seem trivial or not. Don't be afraid to ask. I think we had something in the chat, didn't we? Oh, I didn't see it, if so. My apologies. Let me grab it. Somebody, I have a book on BIM written by a prominent architect in his book. He states 90% of architects cannot visualize in 3D. <laughs> I, would, I would agree with that statement. And I also would agree that 90% of architects can't lay out a proper stair. And I don't know about you folks in different parts of the country, but what I find is once an architect knows and sees what you're doing, they're more than happy to step kind of aside of the design and let you resolve it, which yes, we're doing their job, but it's also an essential part of our jobs today. We all have to understand that the architects aren't being hired to do details and everything like they used to years ago. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's up to your professional game when you get into this type of a software. I can honestly say that. So you're saying we should get part of part of the pay? <laughs> well, you should because, um, for instance, a job like this one, when they came to me looking for design, let me ask you something as a group. Yeah. What would your time be to develop this from that floor all the way up through? How many dollars do you suppose that would take to to do that? To do it like an AutoCAD or? Yeah, to do this so that you had a whole complete laid out resolved stair system. Probably a week's worth of work at least. You're going to do all those floors in a week and lay out the rails, the baluster spacings, all that stuff in a week? The drawing you're talking about or? Yeah, all the drawings for all of those floors. No, not not the spacing and the baluster, but just a basic layout to see if everything fits. Well, I mean, I did, I did all of this design and um, we designed it with the rails and everything to the point where now I can just easily give them all their floor framings. This is ready to be built right. in less than 40 hours. Wow, that's good. And we're ready to, and you know, you're talking $300,000 plus worth of work to be generated and, and produced in less than 40 hours of design, redesigns. There, there's several redesigns in there, especially this particular flight right here, the, this, the lower one. 
to the second one up. Um, you know, these are the things that when these changes happen to try to do it in AutoCAD other than in plan view um, would have been a nightmare. I mean, I could have spent right. weeks, and weeks doing it. Now you can push the button and all of these parts and cut lists and everything go to the shop. So um, this is something that, you know, we got paid for our initial concept design for them um, to resolve it. And, you know, that, that's a, another avenue that you have the opportunity to do um, that if you have the manpower. So, right. Somebody like you, Earl, I, if I can use you for an example, you know, I, I've seen what you have coming up for our exciting um, in the future here that other folks may be not aware of, but you had done a terrific job and your business is tangent hand railing. Um, I think one of the things that this software, even producing it the way that you produce it and producing it with the equipment in the method that you use, I think just the design of resolving this could be a big asset to you as well. Um, I think you probably can see some of, you know, with the way the handrails and being able to transition some of that. It also, you know, yes, you do the rhinos and all that stuff, but like you said, if something changes, that's where the time gets uh, consumed a lot and your profits get consumed a lot. So, you know, these are things that as, as you move forward, you can take a look at. And, and again, we're happy at any point down the road to um, answer any questions. So please don't be bashful about asking. We'll give you an honest, straightforward answer. Um, and we'll do anything we can to help. And remember us in the mentor program. If any of you folks are willing to give an hour or two here or there, please um, let Tara know. And I will reach out personally to you and because I'm heading that up. Um, so we would we'd love to get you involved. It, uh, these are things that can tremendously add to the value for the SMA members and all of us as a whole. And I can honestly say the more contacts that I make and the more people that I learn, the more I get out of the SMA, so. All right. Well, my biggest fear with that was that you buy a software like this and you start working on it, then you get busy with everything and then you get frustrated. And like you mentioned before, just drop it. And I think you have was... to make it a priority to say right. that this is as important as anything else I can do in my business and that I am going to put aside a certain amount of time to learn it. And I think once you, you know, if you can devote, you know, for initially two hours a week for, you know, a few weeks, and then, you know, it's going to go up and down with what your needs are. Um, you're going to get the, the more time you can put in, the more you're going to get out of it. And it's something that if you have a laptop, you take the dongle home with you when you sit down in your uh, recliner at night and play with it a little bit design a few different stairs and just fool with it, you'll figure out pretty quick, you'll learn a lot. And, um, but if you're like me, I have to actually make something and make it work correctly to get the most out of it. Right. So if you see, you know, if you can sit down and say, okay, after supper, there's nothing worthwhile on television these days, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna spend two hours and sit on my laptop and do a couple of drawings and you're going to get excited when you start doing it and you'll get hooked and um, you'll you'll get excited for what it will do for you and then it goes from there on the one thing i would encourage you if you are remotely interested in the software is to get a hold of sitzer he'll come in and you know you give him give him some information about what might be a good middle of the road stair for you. Let him walk you through and show you how you would go about it. You spend an hour together um, and you'll find out if it's something that you 
is right for you or it's not. And I think, like I said, I think I can't say enough about Sitzer as a person. He's become not only uh, a teacher, but a great friend. And, um, you know, his patience and his, his ability to educate you using the software is really the biggest asset. So um, I'd say utilize it. Well, I would definitely like to look into it a little bit more. And like you said, with the sister and try to have a phone conversation, and see what, uh, see what we can make of it. Sits is a puppy dog. He just wants to make you happy and make you love him, <laughs> and he succeeds. <laughs> the support from Sweden is terrific. Um, we literally in the last, I think, three weeks, we had a two hour meeting with the programmers the head programmer and the head person because they're listening to Nate and our request of things that we could see the improvements that can happen in the software. How many times do you hear of that happening? I mean, from when we started four years ago, there were things that they weren't real strong as, as strong in the US market and there were things that, okay, we build our stairs differently here than in Europe or other places. Um, we need these things changed and they've all been implemented. So these are and, things that any software you're buying, ask the hard questions of the software companies. Are they keeping up with that stuff? Are they responsive to what you need? Can they make it work for your needs, not just the general public because your needs are not the same as mine or not the same as, as the next person's. So the important thing is, is being able to get this software tailored to your specific way you want to produce stairs. You know, we, we, we happen to work for a lot of architects that will specify, we've got dozens of different nose profiles because they all want something different. And it's easy enough. You just simply draw it, save it, and now you it's it's in there. So, yeah, you've got to have a cutter for to produce it, but that's secondary. I mean, you can show it, you can do it, moldings, code moldings, you know, skirt cap moldings, all of those things, all your handrail profiles, all those are readily adjustable, so that you don't really have. I've yet to find a limitation with it. So. To speak back to the support side of that, um, five axis handrail, uh, I would machine it in a specific way and rotate my work volume um, to make it run better on the machine. Staircon did not do that. So I ran into some issues um, over time, but uh, taking my feedback from that, they actually made some changes to the cam and how that works. And they're actually willing to um, let me use the the beta of that update before it was actually released. Um, and then they ended up adding into the service pack. They just rushed it and got it in. So, you know, these are changes that they made to the software upon our request. Um, and it worked and they're quick to get it done and they're very receptive and responsive. And, and it's, been, um, it's been a very good uh, back and forth relationship with them. Uh, for the whole process, not just with the CAD, but also with the CAM side of things as well. Well, I would say if you're remotely interested in learning more about the software, um, go online, find SITSA's contact information. SITSA, do you have that information you could put up for these folks and set up an appointment and um, be able to you know, learn more about what are the options for you and whether it's right for you and um, be able to get a, a walkthrough. And just just remember, you're not going to fly through the software as fast as SITSA for a long time. But he'll, he'll walk you right through it quickly and, um, you know, you're going to find that you're going to be amazed by it. So, well, and as, as a general, we we try as, as for Sterk on both CAT and CAM. We we like to um, 
have it open, right? So you have an open database and also uh, you can go to the settings for Stergon Cam and the way how it's going to be machined, which tooling, but also the which tool paths, which ordering plan, all these things are open. So um, not all customers, but but uh, quite a few customers are, are, are uh, we, we install it in a specific way. Maybe they, they had compost before and they, they start machining how they had it before. But if we then say it's open for you to reconsider and, and maybe do it in a different way, then many times we see customers fine tuning the way of machining uh, also because it's more an open software. So we, we, we cannot promise everything, but, but uh, what our goal is, is to have open software, both on the CAT and the CAM to, to, to ensure that you still have for yourself the idea that you have freedom to decide yourself how you, for instance, want to do the machining and not that we are stubborn and saying, okay, this is how we make it. And this is the only way of machining it because the most and the smart ideas uh, come from end users like, like real stair builders like King Stairs or any other uh, company that we have as a customer. And so we, we better listen to it because we only make our own product uh, better. And, and part of it is uh, having it open on the CAM side as well. Uh, we benefit from that as well because we get sometimes feedback or that customers are changing the settings uh, that, that we also learn from it that it's it's actually a better way of machining. Uh, so, so we can have bright um, people programming, but the, the brightest brains of how to machine it and how to practically solve a solution on the on the on the shop floor is is from our customers. So that that we do try to uh, focus on the, to to be open for feedback and 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 to have our software open that they can also make changes themselves. Questions or concerns as it comes up, please feel free to to reach out to either Nate or I if you want to talk about CNCs. We're happy to. I can tell you, Nate can tell you more things than you ever want to know about him. Um, he's happy to pass off information. We've, we've, uh, you can eliminate a lot of hassles if you're getting started with buying cutters, which ones, because once people know that you're thinking about CNCs, you'll have everybody and their brother telling you that you need to buy their cutters because those are the greatest and you're going to find you don't need all that stuff. Um, so yeah, it, you know, Earl's shaking his head cause he knows what I mean. You know, it's, it's, it just, so anything that we can do to pass on some of our knowledge, we're happy to, we don't compete with each other. This is a great thing with the SMA. I've never seen an organization that's so willing to share information. So, um, take advantage of it, be a mentor. <laughs> Thanks Bob. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Again, thanks, Sitsa, Bob, Dennis, Nate, for being here. We really appreciate it. If you guys have questions, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to Sitsa. Bob's willing to answer those as well. So thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time.